winged even as a laugh. I think someday you may have flown too high so the immortals saw you and were glad, watching the beauty of your spirit's flame until they loved and called you and you came. I wish you could take all the guys in college hockey now and say, look, do you have any idea how big this guy was? Do you have any idea how great this guy was as a player and what he meant to an entire country of sports fans? Movie star looks with astonishing athletic ability and an uncompromising sportsman. Every American in the early 1900s aspired to be Hobie Baker. He had absolutely everything. He was a really bright guy, too. He's just so clearly so much cooler than anyone I've ever met at Princeton, so <laughs> he's a legend. He's known more for hockey because of the trophy and because of the building, but the football side of Hobie Baker is a very, very big part of, of his Princeton legacy. He didn't wear a helmet. He didn't wear anything on his head. If you've seen the picture of him in his football uniform, you know, he looks like he's right out of central casting. You know, he looks like he's not even real. It's like he's a model dressed up like a football player. In his four years at Princeton, Baker earned All-American honors in both football and hockey and captained national championship teams in both sports. He gained recognition and notoriety that today's athlete can only dream about. Whatever it was, whatever Hobie did, he did it well. He is the only individual who is in the Hockey Hall of Fame and the College Football Hall of Fame. I have reams of headlines that, uh, from papers, uh, uh, copies that just say, Hobie Baker and seven others beat this team. He couldn't stop them from mentioning his name because he was that good. It's a legacy that extends well beyond accolades. Hobie Baker changed the way the game of hockey was played. He rounded off the blades of his skates, which allowed him to move and turn in a way no one had seen before. They say he could skate circles around people. He did things like you couldn't believe. He was known for skating without looking down at the puck, and this wasn't that common back then. And his dedication to sportsmanship nearly exceeded his commitment to excellence. In his entire career, he got called for one penalty. The historical record is that the official apologized him after the game for calling the penalty. He was fouled terribly, literally hacked to the ice and chopped. It was said that he limped into the other locker room at the end of the game and he shook the guy's hand and he said oh, it was a good game and he left. The inscription here on the side of the building is the only mention that you're actually here at Baker Rink. And Hobie Baker probably would have preferred it that way. When he played at New York's Madison Square Garden, the marquee on the outside would read, Baker plays here tonight. After four games of promoting the Princeton All-American, Baker demanded they take it down. He hated that. There are instances where he would tell somebody, I'm not playing tonight unless you take the banner down that says Hobie Baker tonight. It speaks volumes about what kind of person you're talking about, that you could be that good and you could be that modest at the same time. But over time, Baker struggled to find fulfillment. Lacking adventure and excitement following his graduation from Princeton, he found that purpose as a patriot and a pilot. World War I just happened to come along at the right time for him. You know, he was able to get into the war before America even got into the war and found a second life as a pilot. And the war just appealed to his sense of competition and, you know, drove him. He was so passionate and zealous about it that they had to cancel the 1917-1918 Princeton men's hockey team because all five starters went to war with Hobie. Tragically, Hobie Baker would never play sports again. <laughs> During one final routine training flight in France, the plane he piloted nosedived and crashed. Baker died at the young age of 26. America lost a hero, and to this day, his death still remains a source of controversy. The circumstances surrounding his death suggest that maybe it wasn't an accident and that maybe he couldn't handle coming back to this country and just going to work again in New York City and not have a war to fight or a game to play. Today, Hobie Baker resides at West Laurel Hill Cemetery in Ballakinwood, where he grew up as a child. Still remembered, but never truly celebrated like the greats of Jesse Owens, Jim Thorpe, and Bobby Jones, who also competed during that era. 
he's an American hero. I mean, he was a, an Air Force pilot, incredible athlete, seems to encompass everything that the American dream was at the time and still is. I mean, the thing that amazes me about Hobie Baker is that nobody's ever made the movie about Hobie Baker. The, the Hollywood big budget Ryan Gosling is Hobie Baker movie because what more do you want? That's what he was. He was a larger than life, beloved man of greatness and tragedy. Oh.